Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 6. Today we are once again starting things off at the Mycelium Island because, well, I have been doing some enormous caving around the Ocean Monument. And even though there are three other hermits online at the moment, loading a lot of mobs, we are still getting spawns and quite quickly so. I mean, it doesn't look quickly, but because there are so many other hermits online, they are currently loading mobs and yeah, they're taking up the mob cap, but we're still getting spawns. And what's more impressive is that I actually AFK'd at this thing for three hours and came back and my little storage system here was entirely filled up, like everything was just filled up. So there was like a million items on top of these hoppers. And I don't know how much I wasted by not having a proper storage system to this thing. But it is probably quite a bit. Yeah, we definitely do need a sorter and an autocrafter here for our sea lanterns. Because I've been doing this manually just to save space. And take a look at this. We got some sea lanterns over here. We got some prismarine blocks and some prismarine bricks. And then in this chest, ah, got a lot of sea lanterns here as well. And I've got some shulker boxes with me because I think we shall go back to the Sahara shop and Sahara warehouse and stock these bad boys. That is the amount of sea lanterns I've got from just a few hours of AFKing. That is, that is pretty, pretty ridiculous. Now, if I would have a storage system, I would, I'm sure I would have got more because as you can see, the rates of these coming in, even with with three other hermits online, or stress just left, so now there's just two other hermits online, even with two other hermits online, is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> seriously. And while I've been doing a mega caving session of doom and lit up a lot of caves, there's still like 50% left to do when it comes to caving. So I'm going to keep working at that to make the rates even more impressive. I guess for Sahara, we can also bring back the prismarine blocks. I seriously don't know who would ever want to buy these prismarine bricks. I mean, I mean, look at them. <laughs> they're not, they're not beautiful. Oh, they're really ugly. Before we fly back to Sahara though, I have to make a little bit of rockets and I've been doing a little bit of work outside here as you can see in between episodes, a little bit of terraforming. I'm going to continue this sort of style, wasteland style and even keep the mycelium in the background. I don't know about the shrooms though, I feel like I want to replace the shrooms with like broken down dead trees or bushes or something like that I think could look really cool. I still need to do an interior to this building though, <laughs> that's... That's something that, yeah, this is this is awful inside. And it is really nice to have my own gunpowder farm. I'm so happy I did this. And sugarcane farm, because it's really simple to supply myself with rockets now. Also, before we leave the island, I have actually prepared another little personal business deal, which includes this full Schalke box of mending books, which Remdog has accepted to buy for the stunning price of 32 diamonds. I mean, that's, that's, with the Schalke box, that's not even a diamond each for the mending books. Or, well, it is, I guess, if the Schalke box costs five diamonds. But we're gonna try, since Rendog is online, we're gonna try and make a little bit of a business deal out of it. Rendog. I'm able to deliver your order of 27 mending books. Whereabout would you like your personal Iskal to arrive? He wants us to meet us on the top floor of the Temple of the Dragon, and he calls me son? <laughs> and then he says that he's meditating. <laughs> Alright, on my way. This looks absolutely incredible, by the way. I really like this crystal that Ren has made. And this place is... Yeah, this is looking sick. So I guess this is the... Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> what is up with his looks? Omega lol. <laughs> I love the mustache. I love the mustache. <laughs> Apparently he's Splinter from Turtles because he's doing something with turtles. Beauty lies behind the rat face, young one. <laughs> I shall not judge. You look very beautiful. Your order, senpai. Oh, he's spitting out diamonds at me. Yay! We got 32 diamonds from that little personal deal. What is he saying? I hope you learned that truth isn't the only thing that hurts. Go well. Okay, Rendog, Rendog has clearly lost his mind. <laughs> He's clearly lost his mind. 
Now these many books was a personal sale and so I'm gonna put the 32 diamonds with my one diamond that I had and now I have 33 but as you can see when I was caving I actually stumbled upon 23 diamond ores and right now I feel really rich to be honest. Sahara has also made a sale, made a sale of a beacon, although the receipt is for the customer to keep, well it doesn't really matter. That's great news, so now we have 13 diamonds on our quest to break even. I mean things aren't going too quickly here. Now I think we should sell the sea lanterns at one stack per diamond, so that's what I'm gonna price it. And then if we don't make a lot of sales and we have a lot more sea lanterns that we sell, we can increase it to two stacks per diamond. But I think one stack per diamond is a pretty good price as it is. So I got my receipts, I got my key cards, and I got a bunch of these pre-packed boxes so that the system don't have to pack all of them immediately. So this is how we stock a new item at Sahara. First we make our way down to the decoder right here and this is the first empty slot that we have so then we put the item we want to sell, the key cards of that into the decoder. Then we got to make sure to pick the same warehouse module and that would be this one right here I'm pretty sure. And then the first time we stock anything, we decided to manually stock the first batch. So this is our first batch of sea lanterns, that's nine purchases. But even though we stock the first order manually, we need to make sure to configure the counter so that the next time it stocks something, it does it automatically. And that should be 31 items. I don't know why that triggered, and that's a little bit scary to be honest. It shouldn't have triggered. In theory, I should be able to break this redstone torch and put it back and fake an order. And there's our box, and now we should get a new box dispensed, hopefully. Yeah, a new box is dispensed, and that should fill up with exactly one stack, which we can't actually see, because the Schalke box is blocked by that hopper. But with this timer here, we should see that break at just the right moment. And, yeah, there we go! Nice! And a new box is dispensed, and it's gonna continue to fill up with a supply of sea lanterns. And I don't really know where they are stored, but I would know that the first one should have made it all the way into this dropper, right? And 64, 64 sea lanterns and all, which means that it works. Yes, nice. This system is so awesome. And of course, gotta make sure no one gets that freebie that we tested with, but that had made it all the way to the order minecart. And then at the decoders, again, I need to give the receipts to this dropper here. And the final step is to provide the front system with the amount of sea lanterns that we have in the system. And I know that we have more than 22, so I'll put all 22 in. And uh, yeah, this, this should actually now work. You should be able to order sea lanterns. I kind of want to try it out. Okay, the order has arrived. I wonder if it's going to find it in the warehouse, which is lamp number three. Yes, okay, so I have installed it correctly. Aha, press the order. Now, a lot of people were actually saying that we shouldn't have to press the order as a customer, but that that should be linked up to that stage. And we could totally do that. The reason we have a button is because we want to be allowing multiple orders. So say that I pick five different items to order. There's no way of telling when the customer is ready unless we have a button. So it's kind of like a, you know, customer in control situation. And I think that is a good way to do it, actually. Why is there a book here? Customer review. <laughs> From Red Dog. Entertaining but explosive grand opening almost died. Oh my goodness. But got a crazy bargain for beacons. I mean, yeah, yeah. In-store design, five out of five. Quality of goods, five out of five. Delivery time. Yeah, we may we may need to work a little bit on that one. Customer service, one out of five. What are you talking about? The customer service is great. Your sunglasses saved your life, basically. Food and comfort, one out of five. We're not a restaurant. Ren. I mean, we're not a restaurant. Final word of the is explosive dangerously at, sh at times Bob would shop again. I mean, that is a good review if I ever read one. I'm gonna leave it there in case the other members wants to see it as well. We've got our goods delivered and... Oh, I messed up. I messed up. I ran... <laughs> Where did they even go? I think I put them back. <laughs> oh, that was my fault. That was... Oh, that was so stupid. What an idiot I am. <laughs> I think that just went back into the system. Anyway, did we get the receipt? We got the receipt as well. Everything is working. Now, with Sea Lanterns also being part of Sahara, I really do hope that more hermits come here and shop. I'm not entirely sure what I would price the Prismarine at, so I may just leave that in our meeting room and ask for it to be brought up in another architect meeting in the future because I'm not really great with pricing things. I usually price things way too cheap, and it's better if 
The marketing manager and Master Green takes care of that. Prismarine on the table. Prismarine on the table. So with some Sahara business taken care of, we are back at the Mushroom Island because I want to crack on with another project. And as you guys know, I am super, super keen on starting to properly deal with villagers because as we could see, it already made us a lot of diamonds just by trading a few mending books with the guys. And I really want to get the village trading center up. The only problem is Minecraft keep changing. I kept saying this in the last episode and we are still running 1.14.2 at the time of this recording. And I want to wait until the next version is up because there are some massive changes. So instead of working with villagers today, I want to take on another thing that is really really bothering me and that's this thing here the the idea of not having a proper smelter it's something that i haven't really had since my underwater base in the very beginning of this season and after that it's always been like sort of a pain to smelt something up and so i want to make a super smelter so super smelter it is that's what we're going to be building but before we get, uh, get to a super smelter we need to solve the fuel situation for it because well, that's the main reason my super smelters always fail, is that I don't have enough fuel. And I've been thinking quite a bit about this one. So here's how it goes. We have the blaze uh, rods that are being farmed by the wither skeleton farm, but it's a manual input and it requires me to transport the blaze rods over here, which means that I'll probably not do it that often. Another option would be the kelp. Kelp is, is, is also possible to make work as a fuel. The only problem is that it requires manual input in the terms of having to break it down, smelt it, and then put it into boxes. And yeah, even though we could make a farm for it, that farm would be would have to be pretty big and would probably cause some server lag. The most straightforward fuel would of course be coal. But again, that would require me to manually fuel it. And coal goes so quickly when you don't constantly mine. So that's not a good idea either. So after a long think about this, I think the solution is to take a leaf out of Mumbo's book and go with bamboo. Now I had to come all the way back here because it turns out that I didn't have a single bamboo at the island. And while I did, I actually died in the nether flying back. I hit kinetic energy and I almost lost all my stuff, but I managed to get it back, which feels really good because it was totally down to lag, totally down to junk loading, not, <clears throat> not me messing up. So to farm the bamboo, I'm going to do another zero tick farm, just like the sugarcane farm. And I felt like I should say this as well. While it is heavy on the frame rate, so it lags for the client, it's actually one of the more server-friendly farms that you can do with the amount it produces. Like, it's a lot more friendlier than doing a mega kelp farm with flying machines in the water, or doing a mega bamboo farm with flying machines, or a sugarcane farm. With the yield that that thing gives, it is a lot healthier for the server. I just got to figure out where I want to put it down. So that pillar in the very center there is where I'm planning to have my storage system and possibly have the trading hall all the way around that. That's going to be a pretty large area. And I would like to have my smelter accessed from that area. So I'm thinking right now the smelter, which is going to take up a lot of space, should probably go around this general area. And then maybe the bamboo fuel machine can sit down here. I think that's a good idea because this place doesn't really... It's not really, yeah, it's not really space for a massive machine or anything like that, a massive farm. So this would probably be good. With the terrain slightly flattened out just a little bit, I think we are ready to go. Now this thing is actually just like 10 blocks wide. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I placed that dirt block there. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to be massively big here. And I can probably build it in between this thing. Yeah, I should build it right there. And the design I'm going to use is another Il Mango design. And I'll put his tutorial down below in the comments in case you want to build this yourself. This is probably the first time I use Glazed Terracotta as an immovable block. But I found this... This Glazed Terracotta... Oops, that's wrong. I found this Glazed Terracotta, which is the green Glazed Terracotta. Really cool looking for a bamboo thing. These should be the last pieces we place. And... That should all be working. Okay. I was always very nervous to launch these machines because they are, well, they're so very weird. But, yeah, I think that's it for the bamboo. This was all scaffolding. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness, it's so loud. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful sight. What a beautiful sight. I mean... That's over two stacks already. 
<laughs> Look at the speed of this stuff. <laughs> now I know that Mumbo has a 128 furnace long smelter of doom and I mean that is pretty sick but I wanted to come up with my own design and I wanted to utilize a thing that Mumbo does not utilize which is the return path of the minecart so Mumbo has it go over the furnace and then it takes another rail back and loads with more items. I wanted to use the same sort of rail to bounce back and load the furnaces again. So this is 32 times two furnaces that I have made here. So 32 on this side, 32 on this side. The unloading mechanism is using droppers from underneath. So I got dropper clocks in here and then all the smelted items should end up right here. I got my fuel input on the sides like this. And I'm actually super excited to test this out because I haven't yet tried it out, but it should in theory work. The only thing I have left to do is how to fig uh, is to figure out the the fuel input because right now i've just filled these guys with bamboos and yeah that's not entirely uh easily to to link up to one bamboo source but for now that's gonna do it so if i press this button here these should go and fuel all of the furnaces yep and i mean that needs to run quite a few times because it spreads it out evenly Oh, this is looking so cool. And then if we want to smelt something, and this is what I haven't tested at all yet, we should be able to do this. So because it's a double hop or double furnace line, I should be able to have two hopper mine carts. And then this is our input chests. And this is configured so every hopper mine cart should pick up exactly one stack of items, which is obviously 64 items, so 30 32 times 2 should be smelted at the same time. So if I quickly stack two stacks, we should have zero items left here. Yep, perfect. They shoot off and our furnaces are starting to melt things. It's a little bit tight to see stuff here. And then this time they should be completely empty because there should be two items in each. Nice. And we should see the items starting to shoot out at the bottom here. There wasn't enough of bamboo in there. <laughs> so one bamboo doesn't work to, to power to power one block that's hilarious that's absolutely hilarious <laughs> so we actually have to make sure because this is not even going to work now look at what happens the bamboo runs over and then it starts burning it and yeah it's it's never going to complete the task <laughs> So we have to make sure that the fuel line is constantly powering the few the furnaces because if it doesn't well, <laughs> while it looks absolutely spectacular, it doesn't actually work. Oh, dear. Okay. So how many bamboo sticks does it take to burn one block? Is it two or is it more? It's... <laughs> what? It takes four... Yeah, four sticks to burn one block. <laughs> it's a good thing that we are producing bamboo very, very quickly. All right, so let's give this another go then. We got two stacks of sand and in they go. We should see exactly all the sand being pulled out. That is so beautiful. Beautifully timed. And this time we shouldn't run out of bamboo. So we should see the glass coming down this line here. Any moment now. Yeah, here it comes. Oh, it works. It works. It absolutely works. That's one stack. And here comes the second stack. And there it is, built on the Hermitcraft server. And I gotta say, <laughs> this thing looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so the difference from the creative test world is that I put the fuel input in the back here. And I'm working currently on trying to connect this up together. Because I'm an idiot, I also built this thing one block too tall up. And I didn't fancy rebuilding it, so I wired up the bamboo farm like this where i have hoppers running underneath the water and hopefully that's going to be good enough i'm i'm pretty sure that we're going to get a lot of bamboo just sitting here though that's what i worry about because we're going to be limited at the speed of hoppers at this point in time but there's like yeah like eight hoppers in there so hopefully that works now what we got to do is we got to make sure to whenever this chest is not full uh, of bamboo i want to make sure to have the bamboo machine on if I can. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> we don't need a T flip flop here. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <sighs> That's funny. We just need to power this piston. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
This is exactly what I was afraid of. So I stepped away for about 10 minutes and... Yeah, this is not good. This is not good. Oh dear, it gets a lot worse. It gets a lot worse. So this first hopper here, which doesn't have a water stream on it. Yeah, that's also an issue. I should probably replace this entire thing with hoppers. That will help a little bit. Like I say though, this is only really when we started the first time. Because now, when the chest is full, although these minecarts are still sucking items out. We should see this power, which, <laughs> which is not doing. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to show. But there you go, the bamboo machine shuts off. So that is at least working fine. The only problem is, like the very first time here, all of these hoppers <laughs> needs to get completely full. And then the chest needs to be completely full. So it's probably like an AFK session over an hour. But because of the pickup system, I can't fully AFK. Because if I do, well, we're going to have entity issues. Potentially, I could build two of these bamboo machines and hook up water streams to the fuel lines immediately. Skipping the minecarts and skipping that unlocking situation over there and just having two separate ones feed or one separate one for each line. And that would probably be better and then compare the hoppers for when we stop the machine. That'd be a little bit faster as well because the issue is just the pickup rate of these hoppers. I may have to think about that, but... Outside of that, as long as this is filled once, it's not going to be that big of an issue. So we may just we may just go with it. But let's try to actually use the smelter. And the server is lagging a little bit at the moment. The thing that I'm going to smelt down is going to be sandstone. Because I'm going to need a lot of cut sandstone. And maybe we should give it a test with 8 stacks. If 8 stacks goes in. And we should see the cart being shot away. This is the very first test as well. So it's not entirely sure that this is working this is looking so cool though and then they lock when they come back it uh, took almost exactly two stacks okay a little bit off when we do it here on the hermitcraft server because of server lag this is a timed circuit so i may have to play around a little bit with the repeaters here but anyway we should see the cut sandstone coming in and look at that oh <laughs> that is really nice or smooth sandstone <laughs> yes it is fully fully functioning that's such a beautiful system. Look at that. <laughs> Obviously, we'll have a collection chest. But yeah, this is just this is just so satisfying. It's still going, by the way. <laughs> I kind of like to just stand in this and just receive all the smooth sandstone in my face. And it is very, very, very quick. Oh, I'm so happy to have a super smelter that actually works. And that is very, very quick. That's eight stacks. And I should have timed this correctly. But I think it took about one and a half minutes for eight stacks of blocks to smelt. That is... Oh, that's such a relief. I hate waiting for smelters. And, uh, yeah, that furnace still have bamboo in it or still has bamboo. These are a little bit lower. But like I said, as long as we let this run uh, and load it up properly once, we shouldn't have too much of an issue keeping up with the bamboo demand. Now, of course, we have to put a massive building over this, and I mean massive because it needs to be massive. And I'm kind of picturing something that has to do with a lot of glass in this general area here, because I kind of want to see the engine of the smelter from outside. And I definitely want to see that engine because, yeah, these machines, as I've said before, are just so freaking cool looking. But I have to decide, and I'm going to think a lot about it. If you have any suggestions, do leave them down below in the comments. But I'm going to think a lot about if I should do two of these instead, one per each fuel line. Because that will definitely be fast enough, and it's going to make sure that everything gets filled. So I would place one here, and one on the other side, and then water stream these hoppers right here. Having yeah bamboo traveling over them that that would that would definitely work But I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Hermitcraft. That's gonna do it for today Thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy please do hit the like button down below and if you're brand new consider subscribing And I will see you dudes in the next episode and the, yeah that <laughs> there was a bit of a voice crack on the subscribing part there 